These are my top 25 tips and tricks for the Outlook calendar. The first tip is changing the default start or end times to your Outlook meetings. Especially during the pandemic, this is great to ensure that people have breaks between online meetings in particular. So I'm here in my calendar in Outlook. I'll go to the file menu, go down to options, and now choose calendar. Right here, there's an option shorten appointments and meetings. I'll check this on. Maybe I wanna have all meetings end early, and I can say if it's less than one hour and five minutes early, or if it's one hour or longer, maybe I want it to end 10 minutes early. And instead, if you wanna say, I wanna actually start them a little bit late, you can do that, but we'll have it do end early, and I'll hit okay. Now when I go here and click new meeting, you'll see the default time is five minutes early. So in this case, maybe I want it to be an 11 a.m. meeting, it is gonna end five minutes early. The second tip is a really easy way to share your calendar in an email with someone with just a couple of clicks. So I have an email from Bill Lumberg here. He wants me to come in and work on a Saturday. I'm gonna to reply to this message and insert, and there's an option here for calendar. Now I can choose to insert all sorts of days right into the calendar. I'm gonna send specific days that go from this Friday all the way until next Saturday so he can see my availability. I can also have advanced here if I wanna show and hide different email schedules and layouts and other information, but we'll keep it simple. And I'm gonna not show time within my working hours because he wants me to work on a Saturday. I can also now just hit okay and it inserts all of my schedule right here. It has my Pacific time zone. It has all of my calendar inserted so he can see, oh, I'm free on a Saturday. It also adds an iCal file in case you want that person to be able to have the iCal imported into their calendar. In this case, I'm just gonna remove that and I'll send my calendar to Bill. The third tip is enabling Teams meetings by default for all meetings that you send out. So I'm gonna go to the file menu and go down to options. Go to calendar and there's a new option that is add online meeting to all meetings and this will be with a Teams meeting. Check that on and then hit OK, and then reboot your Outlook. Now, when I go to New Items and I choose Meeting, it's already a Teams meeting. Now I just hit Send. The fourth tip is also a calendar integration with Teams feature. I've made this a Teams meeting, and Meeting Options is right here. So now I can click Meeting Options, and all the Teams meeting options are pulled right into this dialog, so I don't need to go to the web. So I can set who can bypass the lobby, who can present, is the meeting chat enabled or disabled or recording automatically. All those can be set right here from Outlook and then just hit save. And now my Teams meeting is all ready to go and I don't need to go into Teams right before the meeting to configure things. The fifth tip is a long time underknown but useful Outlook feature, which is reply with meeting. Bill Lumberg sent a mail out to Kara, Ella, and Alex here. I want to reply to this mail to set up this meeting. Right here under respond, there is a reply with meeting button. Shortcut is control alt R. Click this. This opens up a brand new meeting. The title of the mail is right here is the title of the meeting. The required people are all from the mail that was sent from Bill. It's even got teams all ready to go because we set that default and the details of the mail are at the bottom right here. So this is all ready to go and just hit send. The sixth tip is conditional formatting on Outlook calendar items. This means that I can format the color of my meeting item based on things like who sent it to me. So I wanna make sure that all meeting items from Bill Lumberg have a certain color. I have this meeting from Bill here, so I'm gonna to go to the view menu in my calendar up top, then choose view settings, then choose conditional formatting. Now I'm gonna choose add, and we'll call this boss, because it's my boss rule. And the color we want is black, black for Bill Lumberg, and then set the condition. So anything organized by, click here, and let's choose Bill Lumberg and choose Organize By and click OK. Now hit OK and then OK and one last OK. And check that out, all my Bill Lumberg meetings are now in black. And you can do this for lots of other conditions. I just chose Organize By Bill Lumberg in this case. The seventh tip is Meet Now is exposed right in the Outlook calendar and this is Teams integration. So up on the Home tab, you have New Teams meeting but you also have Meet Now. So if I click this, Hey, here I am, give your meeting a title and Meet Now is ready to go in Teams. Click Join Now and you're set. The eighth tip is OneNote integration for meeting notes in your Outlook calendar. So I've got my TPS report cover sheet discussion with Bill Lumberg. I'm gonna open up this meeting I wanna prepare ahead of time. 
I can choose send to OneNote right here and it will create a page in OneNote with all the meeting details so I can be prepared. So I'll click this, choose take notes on your own. Now a OneNote dialog pops up with all of your OneNote notebooks. I've got my micro tips here and I'm gonna put this into my research for researching TPS and I'll click OK. Now you can see it creates a new page in OneNote with the title right here, the meeting date, the participants, and I am ready to take notes with Bill Lumberg when we meet. There's even a link to get back to that Outlook meeting item. Right here it says link to Outlook item, I'll click here, and it will bring that meeting right back up. So now I've got a bi-directional link between an Outlook meeting and my OneNote page. The ninth tip is natural language in Outlook meeting date pickers. So I'm gonna open up a new meeting here. I've opened my new meeting and let's say I wanna have a meeting that is next Thursday. I can just delete this date here and type that. Next Thursday, hit tab, it automatically calculates that in the date. And this works for other types of natural language and it's just a nice little handy tip for your date pickers. The 10th tip is changing time scales in your Outlook calendar. So by default, it has a time scale where each slot here is 30 minutes. I can change that though. If I go to view, I can go to time scale and maybe I want those slots to be 60 minutes. Now each slot is basically an hour, but I could also make it smaller. So maybe I want each slot to be 15 minutes. Now I can do 15 minute increments for meetings or my calendar and that gives you a little more granularity. If you even wanna get smaller, you can go all the way to five minutes. The 11th tip is a set of handy shortcuts to change your views in the calendar really easily. I'm here in work week, which shows five days at once. If I just wanna show one day, I do alt one. Now it's showing Monday. Alt two shows Tuesday, two days. Alt five will do five days, all the way up to alt nine, showing nine days. If I do alt zero, it shows 10, and then alt equals will show the entire month view and we'll do Alt-1 to go back to that first day. The 12th tip is showing your calendar in your inbox. So if I go to the view menu here from my Outlook inbox, over here on the right, choose to do bar and then choose calendar. This brings up your entire calendar right here on the right. I can make it a little bit bigger if I want. And it's nice to be able to navigate very quickly so I don't have to leave my inbox to glance at my calendar to see what's coming up. The 13th tip is a related feature, and that is the ability to join a Teams meeting directly from your to-do calendar bar. So on my right here, I have my calendar bar open, and I've got a Teams meeting. I can now just go here and choose Join Online. So I'll click here. That pulls up the Teams meeting dialog right here, and I'm ready to just click and join that meeting. So it's a nice time saver to go directly from your to-do bar. The 14th tip is an oldie but a goodie, and that is the ability to drag an email right into your calendar to create a meeting. So I have a mail from Bill about coming in on a Saturday. I guess I need to make a meeting in my calendar or at least an appointment for that. So I'm gonna drag this email, left click and drag, down to the little calendar icon and drop it. That creates a new appointment. Here's the title, let's set it for this Saturday, and I guess it's gonna be an all day event. Then just hit save. Now it's in my calendar. The 15th tip is a nice one that I use quite a lot in my job and that is turning off response options in a meeting. So I'll go here and drop down new items and choose meeting and I'll give it a title and the set of people that are required. Now this research share out, I don't necessarily need to see all the different responses from people. I actually don't care if they come or not. So if I go here to response options, I will uncheck request responses. What this means is when people respond, it still goes into their calendar, but it's not gonna send me a response because I honestly don't care. So I'm gonna send this meeting off right here and I'll show what it looks like on the recipient side. I'm signed in as Bill Lumberg here and here is that meeting about the TPS report top learning research share out. I definitely wanna go to this. So I'm gonna go here and click yes, but it doesn't ask me to send a response to Kara. It still puts it in my calendar. So here it is in the calendar. Let's switch back to Kara just to show that it did not give her a response when Bill responded. So here is Kara, there's no meeting acceptance that came in. So that's how the request response works. The 16th tip is disallowing forwarding of meetings. Not a lot of people know about this one. So I have a meeting here and I'm about to send it to Bill Lumberg about super secret TPS report designs and I don't want him to forward it to other people. I'll go to response options and I'm gonna uncheck allow forwarding. This means that he can't forward it in Outlook to other people. So I'll click send. Now we'll switch over to Bill Lumberg and show what it looks like on his end when he gets this meeting. 
okay, here's that super secret meeting that says don't forward. I'll click here to open it. And even though it says don't forward, I'm Bill Lumberg. I just do what I want. So I'm just gonna go and forward that. I'll click the three dot menu. Wait a second, there's no forward there. Even if I open this meeting, oh, the forward right here, it's disabled. I can't forward it. Ah, I've been foiled by Kara Coleman. The 17th tip is category colors. I personally use this one a lot in my job. It helps me glance at my calendar and have a sense of where I'm spending my time. So I have a lunch meeting here that recurs daily and I wanna make this a specific color. So I'm gonna right click on one of these and I'm gonna to go to categorize and I'm gonna choose yellow. And now all of these are yellow. Maybe I want my one-on-ones to be red. I right click here and categorize these as red. I can also select a meeting here and then the appointment little context menu opens here and go to categorize. That's another way to get to it. I'll go to all categories. Here are some of the default ones. I can create new ones as well. So I'll click new here and this is gonna be for top secret and we'll make this one brown. And even a shortcut key, in this case, I will make the shortcut key control F2, hit OK. So now anytime I hit control F2 or manually right click and change it, for top secret meetings, they'll be brown. So let's click OK. Oh, TPS report offsite, that's definitely top secret and brown. If I want to clear this out, I can right click and say clear all categories. Now it's back to boring old light blue. And again, if I do control F2 on this TPS report offsite to make it top secret brown, let's do control F2, look at that brown. The 18th tip is also a newer one. Not a lot of people know about it. It allows you to switch your normal work week view or your daily view into a schedule view where everything starts to go horizontal. So right here on the home tab, under arrange, you see schedule view. If I click this, now I can see all of these arranged horizontally with the actual hours across the top and the meetings here. This is actually much more helpful if you're looking at multiple things going across at once, but it aligns your schedule to go the opposite direction like this, and I can scroll across and have the time across the top. It's kind of a similar view like you have in a meeting request, so when you open up your meeting here and go to scheduling assistant, it's a similar view where the times are on top and then everything else, the people, are over on this side. And to switch back to your normal view, just go to work week like this. The 19th tip is showing multiple time zones in your Outlook calendar. This is really handy if you're working with other people who are geo-distributed, and instead of having to calculate all the time zones for meetings in your head, you can quickly glance and see these things. I'm gonna start by going to the File menu, then go down to Options. Now choose Calendar, and then scroll down a little bit, and you'll see time zones. So first, you can label yourself, so in this case, I'm in Seattle, Here's my time zone Pacific. I can show a second time zone. In this case, we'll say India. And then you drop down time zone, you have all these choices. So let's find the right one. There we go. And let's show a third one, let's do Beijing. There's Beijing. And now I'll click OK. What you see is it's added Beijing, India, and Seattle. So now I can just glance and say, oh, if I make an 11 a.m. appointment, it's 2 a.m. in Beijing and 12 a.m. in India. That's probably not a good time. You can also go and you can swap the order of these things. So if I go back to file and options and then calendar, let's scroll down and I can say swap time zone. So I can do this. Now India's on top, click again, Beijing's on top. So now if I hit okay, it swaps the order where Beijing is farthest on the right. The 20th tip is the default color of any appointment created in your calendar. So I'm gonna type right here, hit enter and it's a light blue color. So by default, any new appointment created in your calendar is this light blue. Maybe I wanna change that for this one and for future ones. Just click anywhere in your calendar, right click and choose color, and maybe I want the default color to be magenta. So you can see now default color is that, and if I type a new one, it uses that new default color. Even the highlighting over here on my calendar is that same magenta color. So this lets you spruce up that boring old light blue you might have seen for the last decade or so to a little bit nicer color. The 21st tip is dark mode, which can make your calendar look a bit easier on the eyes, especially with all these colors. So I'm gonna go to the file menu here and then go down to office account, drop down office theme here and then choose black. Now I'll hit the back button Ooh, my calendar looks quite nice now. I'm liking dark mode. The 22nd tip is changing your default working hours, and this will show up for other people who are also trying to schedule meetings with you. I'm gonna go to the file menu here, and then go down to choose options, then choose calendar. 
Right here is your work hours. By default, Outlook will set this from eight to five, Monday through Friday. Hey, maybe I like to sleep in and I work a little bit later, so 10 a.m. and we'll say my end time is 6 p.m. and maybe I don't work on Friday, so don't schedule me then. And you can even set first day of the week or first day of the year. But in this case, we'll keep it simple and click OK. You can see what happened here is it just shifted. Now this light whiter part goes from 10 a.m. to 6 p.m. And you can see it looks more gray all the way from 9 a.m. And all Friday is now all grayed out. In addition, when people are looking at my calendar to schedule me, it will show this gray zone implying you probably shouldn't book the person then because they're not working then. The 23rd tip is adding numbers to your date navigator here, which is kind of nice if you're looking at one through 52 weeks. So I'll go to the file menu, go down and choose options, go to calendar. Now scroll down. You'll see a show week numbers in the month view and in the date navigator. We're going to turn this on and click OK. Now it's nice, all the little numbers of the weeks come on the left hand side. So if I go all the way back, I see one here for the first week of January two, and it goes all the way to the end of the year. So I can know it's the 20th week on May, 2022. The 24th tip is a cool shortcut directly to calendar options. So instead of having to go to the file menu and then down to options and choose calendar, I can just right click here and choose calendar options. Bang, there we go. It's all set, really easy to quickly update your calendar options. The 25th tip is using the weather component in Outlook. So right now it has the weather pulling up. It has Washington DC. Well, I'm not from there. I'm going to add one for Seattle. Type in Seattle and search for that. Seattle, Washington. Now it pulls it up. Oh, it's always cloudy in Seattle, but it's kind of nice to be able to just quick glance and see your weather right in the calendar. If you want to keep up with all the latest Microsoft updates and tips and tricks, subscribe to my channel and then just ring the bell so you get all the latest videos that I post.